Ambor is back with the Indigo Disc DLC, and it's a super slept on starter. It has a solid base 123 attack, 110 HP for bulk, but 65 speed which needs some love. Which is why I enjoy running a Choice Scarf set to give it a 50% boost in speed. But most importantly, it has the ability called Reckless. This boosts all moves that have recoil or crash damage by 20%. We can pair this with the Stab Flare Blitz, which is already a solid 120 base power move, along with coverage options like Head Smash and Wild Charge, and Ambor can hit like an absolute truck. Ladies and gentlemen, I am on my quest to use every single Pokemon that has returned to us from the DLC, and today I have a super fun match for you. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button, it's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is working with a pretty ridiculous team. They're gonna lead off with the Deoxys, but I have the power of the sun on my side. These legendaries, do you think you're stronger than the sun? Because we're gonna find out today, tough guy. I lead off with Mozilla Firefox, and I want to try to just get that sun up as early as possible. And also, I can basically just go for a nice little fire blast here, as generally Deoxys is going to be kind of a, a suicide lead, basically just to go for some stealth rocks, try to get some damage off before it goes down. Uh, I do connect on a nice little fire blast, and it knocks it down to that Focus Sash. So, old skinny ass Noodle Arms does unfortunately hang on here, and at this point, I'm just going to go for a Solar Beam. I don't want to risk missing a fire blast. And it also covers for potential switches in Ninetales. I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing. They do go for the Psycho Boost and actually end up missing, so hey, that's actually pretty solid. And then we just beam the hell out of him with a nice little Solar Beam, and that is going to be able to take care of the lead Deoxys. So we're feeling pretty good about the start of the match. I'm in a pretty solid spot. I want to ensure that I try to take care of Ninetales being able to conserve that to set up the sun later. I've got a couple of Chlorophyll Mons on my squad that definitely enjoy it, but they get themselves a nice little free revenge switch, and in comes Raging Bolt. It also gets its Protosynthesis activated, no thanks to my own son, and old Giraffe Dinosaur Boy is a massive threat. So, obviously, I do have to switch Ninetales out of here. He's looking up like, what the hell am I supposed to do with that thing, bro? But I decide to go into the Swampert. I'm thinking, potentially, I catch him going for, like, the, the Thunderbolt, but it's more likely that they Calm Mind, and that's exactly what they're going to do here. And listen, Raging Bolt with a Calm Mind up and a Protosynthesis, I am certainly in danger. Swampert is the one that's probably going to be out here getting hurt. But I figure I, can, I actually have a pretty solid chance to be able to take an attack from this thing. Its best damage would be something like a Draco Meteor, which does kill. But it actually ends up going for the Dragon Pulse. And guess what? Swampert is the absolute goat because we're able to live. Fire off an Earthquake. However, unfortunately, the Earthquake is not quite enough uh, to take care of it. This is actually even... A max attack Swampert. This thing is is here to lay down the hurt, but uh, <laughs> Raging Bolt does live. And now I find myself in a spot where I don't have a whole lot of options. I definitely can't switch into this thing, and I just have to let the Swampert go down. I did, however, get some nice solid chip on this thing, so I feel like that is fine. I unfortunately wasn't able to set up my Stealth Rock, but now I get a switch into whatever I like. So, at this point, I know that I can outspeed this thing with either of my Chlorophyll Mons, so... I decide to bring in old Faceplant, he's in here just protosynthesizing the shit out of the sun, and I can essentially... What I decide to do here is I go for the Sleep Powder. The reason is, I kind of predict them to go for a Thunderclap, basically just before they go down. Thank God I actually do land the, the Sleep Powder, which is amazing. And now, I have a kind of a, a position where I could potentially go for something like a Growth, however, if this thing wakes up, it's, it's gonna be a bad time. I'm essentially gonna die, I only have two turns of sun left, so I figure I'm actually just going to take care of the threat at hand, and I just decide to go for that Psy Shock. Again, we're still faster. Executor is just running all crazy out here with his weird stumpy legs, and that's going to take care of the Raging Bolt. So, Long Raikou, no longer a threat. We got two down, and we're feeling, we're feeling pretty solid here. We at least have one more turn of sun to take advantage of, and now they decide to go into Superior. Listen, Superior is one of the scariest mons right now, I, I swear to god, this thing is literally insane. I decided to just go for the Psy Shock. The reason is, I want to just get some chip on this thing. It's not quite going to be able to knock it out, unfortunately. Uh, but these things are often going to be running something like a Life Orb. It's going to knock itself out if it is carrying that. However, they just go for a Glare. And first of all, rude. It glares me right before my son goes away. And now Executor, who was runs running around all crazy legs, he's now... You know, extremely slow. So <laughs> It actually ends up having leftovers, and that's just worse, because now it's starting to heal, and I figure, all right, I'm going to take this opportunity, go into Ninetales. I can set back up the sun. It likely just goes for something like the Leaf Storm here to try to get that contrary special attack boost rather than the drop. Um, and I might be able to take two of them, but it's probably, 
it's not likely. But I do get up that drought, and what that's gonna do is ensure that Venusaur in the back does outspeed now, and I can kill it with a Sludge Bomb later. So, it does go for that Leaf Storm to grab the special attack boost. This thing is, basically, it's got that doubled special attack, and honestly, it's super fast, it's an absolute menace. So, essentially, I don't have any options to really switch into anything at this point, and I kind of just have to let Ninetales uh, get uh, absolutely destroyed by some leaves, which probably don't happen, happen often, but Superior, he's able to get that one there. So, now it's sitting at plus four special attack, and still taking some more bites out of that there apple. So, I find myself in a spot where, essentially, what I have to do is, I'm kind of forced to go into the Venusaur. Brute Root, kind of my best option here. Uh, under Chlorophyll, I am going to be faster. Also, I can show this thing who the superior Grass-type starter is, eh? Am I right? So here's the thing, I know that they know that I outspeed them with Sludge Bomb. I easily grab a kill here, so what I'm going to do instead, predict a switch and go for the growth. That's going to give me plus two special attack. However, they literally stay in for absolutely no reason at all. They basically, they stay in to sack the superior and they go for the glare, which is absolutely detrimental to my little frog with warts all over the place. We are having a bad time. So I make, I make an over prediction there. I, I felt like the switch was obvious and the growth kind of sealed me like a sweep with the Venusaur. But now I find myself paralyzed having just an absolutely horrid time. So essentially what I can do here is just go for that Sludge Bomb. They're actually going to end up going for the Terra themselves. Keep in mind this thing has massive special attack at this point, and they're even going to go for that gra uh, the Stellar Terra, sorry, just to be able to have more even insane damage. So here's how Stellar works. Essentially it gets the normal Terra boost on every move for the first time it uses it, but for Terra Blast, it's always super effective on a Mon uh, that did it is also terra So even though I'm not terra this thing has an insane amount of special attack, and down goes Venusaur. So that was actually a huge hit. Definitely a big misplay on my end. I felt like it was worth it to go for the growth, because hear me out. If I got that growth off, literally Venusaur wrecks their entire team upon switching out. But the glare definitely ruins the plans. And now I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta make some moves here. I decide to switch into Chris P. Bacon. I'm actually Choice Scarf, so uh, with the plus speed nature, I can actually outspeed this thing, thankfully, and I can finish it off with a Flare Blitz here. And I am most definitely gonna have to crawl my way back from this one, but at least we kill the evil snake and down goes also their Terra. So they can no longer Terra anything here, which is the benefit, and we've got half of the team down. So Superior's taken care of, and Embor's out here just enjoying the extra damage from the sun. And being locked into, locked into Flare Blitz actually isn't a huge deal because, check this out, in comes Darkrai. And this is quite the fast legendary. This thing it has insane speed and even being Choice Scarf, it's actually going to be able to outspeed me. However, they're going to make a little over prediction of their own and they go for the Nasty Plot, which is amazing because I just stay in and absolutely nuke the hell out of Buddy. With that Flare Blitz, it is going to easily take care of the Darkrai. And now we are actually in a pretty decent position here. Embor is still super fast with that Scarf. Um, the Sun is going to stay up for a few more turns, so we can get some big damage. However, now we just have to deal with the damn Latios. And I swear to God, I'm getting Whiplash from all the absolute insane threats over here. So what I decide to do here is I have to switch out the Embor. Uh, a Flare Blitz, even in the Sun, isn't going to be able to knock it out. However, it does huge damage, which is good to know for later. So... What I'm going to do here is essentially, I go into the Executor, this is basically just going to be a sack. If I can sack off the Executor, I can then get in Sableye, and I'm actually max special defense on the Sableye. And obviously with my typing, I'm pretty fit to handle uh, the Latios here. So, they end up going for a Luster Purge, which I actually managed to live. And it doesn't really matter because they just outspeed, finish me off with another little Luster Purge, and down goes the Executor. So, I'm now down to two Pokemon left. I have the Embor, which has massive potential, plus I have the, the Sableye, who is basically here fit to handle uh, the, the Latio. So, they have one more Pokemon in the back other than this Latio, and that is going to be a Golden Metal Rasta dude, the Golden Go. So, I can bring in Sableye here. Essentially, I know that if they, it might even be Choice Specs if they're locked into Luster Purge, they obviously can't attack. I can go for a knockoff here, and they are basically forced to switch into the Golden Go. So, this thing takes a knockoff, I'm gonna be like, hey, nice balloon you got there, nerd, and just knock it off, and it does over half, which is amazing. So, this is essentially a spot where I really need to try to manage this Sableye's health. Unfortunately, this Sableye is essentially here to set up Sun for my Sun team. So, it doesn't have the correct build here, but I'm essentially forced to stay in. I know that I can at least take one Make It Rain, 
uh, which I do nicely, and uh, it does a solid amount of damage to us. However, that is gonna activate my eject button. Now, again, this Sableye is basically just here to be able to prankster Sunny Day, get hit, and eject button immediately into something who needs the sun, so don't quite have the exact build I'm looking for, but what that does is at least mount allows me a free switch into, uh, into the Embor here, who does enjoy basically coming in for free. I take some Stealth Rock chip, and now I can outspeed and finish this thing off with a Flare Blitz. So, Embor is out here absolutely taking names with the Flare Blitz. I probably could have gone for uh, a Sunny Day to try to boost my Flare Blitz damage, but I didn't know exactly what that Golden Go wanted to go for. So, Chris P takes some recoil damage, but we are still healthy enough to be able to outspeed this Latios that comes in. So, this thing does come in for free. Keep in mind, I do not have any Stealth Rock up, which is wildly unfortunate, but Essentially, all I can do at this point is go for the Terra Fire. I essentially want to get as much damage as possible with this Flare Blitz, and that is when I wish I would have gone for the Sunny Day. But, I put the old Chandelier on Embor's head. We are looking both delicious, crispy, and also pretty scary. So, what that's going to do is give me extra stab to try to grab as much damage as possible with the Flare Blitz. With that reckless damage, it is going to do an absolutely insane amount of damage to the Latios, but it is able to take it and I don't knock myself out with the recoil, but they're gonna end up going for the surf. And now here's where it was super important that they were able to get off that make it rain against Sableye. Because while I am max special defense on that set, I don't think I'm gonna have quite enough health to be able to, uh, you know, take the surf. So all I can essentially do at this point is bring in Stitch without my Lilo. And if I can get off a knockoff, it is gonna be able to finish off the Latios. But we come in, we take some Stealth Rock, and I go for that knockoff, but they're just going to be able to obviously outspeed, and a Surf does take care of the Sableye. So, it was actually a super close ending, certainly some misplays on my end, but I like to showcase both sides. You know, sometimes it doesn't always go the way you plan it, and that's kind of the name of the game we play. So, I still had a lot of fun with it. If I, Clem Lunette wasn't working with like eight legendaries, it would have been a little bit easier. But, you know, <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support, and I will catch you next time. Peace out.